I have seen how there seems to be an obsession with this very simple exercise from last term's third midterm. Let's work on that once and for all. In the circuit, the resistors R1 is 6 ohms. R2 on the right is 8 ohms. The capacitor is 50 milliohms and the inductor 1 Henry. Determine what should be the ratio of this ideal transformer N for the circuit to be critically damped. Maybe it's impossible. Maybe there is not a realistic N for that. But we need what should be the value of N for that to be the case. I will not even look at part B. Concentrate only on part A. Later, I will solve again the circuit reading the entire exercise. And then I will take advantage of part B to solve part A. But for now, I will not. When I look at a circuit like this with an honest-to-God transformer, what I do usually is refer all the impedances on one side to the other side. That's what I'm about to do. I will refer R2 and this inductor over to this side, to the left. How? You know how. Divide their impedances by n squared. And then you will have this circuit. In this circuit, of course, the voltage source, the 6 ohm resistor, and these capacitors impedance have not changed because they remain on the side they were in on the circuit in the left. What is this 20 over S? That is just the impedance of this 0 0.05 farads capacitor. Remember, 1 over CS, that is 20 over S. R2, R2 8 ohms, becomes 8 divided by N squared. And uh, this impedance, Ls, 1s, is just s divided by n squared. And we solve that circuit using MNA. We do the usual. We select the directions for the branch currents, reference node, node 1, write a KCL equation, and solve for V1. And look what we have. We have a differential equation with coefficients 3, 3, 4, and this, which is a constant. 80 plus 60 n square. We just don't know what is the value of n, but that is a differential equation set of coefficients we need to solve for. Those are the coefficients of the characteristic equation. If the roots of this equation, the characteristic equation, are double unreal, then the system is critically damped. That means that if the discriminant of this quadratic equation is zero. Zero? Yes, b squared equals to 4ac. Remember high school? Like here. Critically damped, the discriminant of the characteristic equation specified by this denominator has to be zero. b squared minus 4ac has to be zero. That means b squared has to be equal to 4ac. Who is b? b is 34. And a? 3. And c? This constant over here, 80 plus 60 n squared. Let's write that equation. And this is the equation, b squared, 34 squared, minus 4 ac, 4 times 3 times c. That is an equation with n as an unknown. We solve for it. Of course, it's quadratic. We're going to get a positive and a negative value. And n has to be positive, so n is solving that 0.52175. Now, we are asked to find the differential equation whose solution is this current, the current in the source. What an easier way to find that current than find all the equivalent resistance, excuse me, impedance seen by the source, divide Vs by that impedance, and that's going to give us Is? Not really. It's going to give us the differential equation whose solution is Is, or in any case, it's going to give us Is in the Laplace domain. And once you have that uh, impedance seen by the source as a function of S, you can divide the voltage source Vs by that impedance like so and get the current in the source in the Laplace domain. Check this out. If the roots of the denominator of the current, which of course 
are going to tell you if the system is critically damped or not happen to be the roots of the numerator of the impedance. That explains why Dr. Yan goes directly to the roots of the numerator of the impedance, knowing in advance they will be the roots of the denominator of the current, which are the coefficients of the differential equation whose solution is the current in the source IS. And they lived happily ever after the rest of the uh, exercise is pretty simple. I leave that up to you guys. Have a wonderful exam tomorrow. Good night.